Over the last few days, Rachel Zegler's rather inconsistent comments about Disney's upcoming Snow White remake have gone vital, and so has the backlash against her. To the point where even mainstream media are running stories about branding experts claiming her comments are destroying the movie's chances at the box office. That is a lot to lay at the feet of a 22-year-old actress who, however unlikable she may come across, is only parroting the talking points that have been relayed to her by her Disney handlers. Because make no mistake about it, this movie's big problem isn't Rachel Zegler, but Disney. In this editorial, we will explore what Zegler has said about Snow White, how Disney are the ones who told her to say it. And finally, and most importantly, why Disney themselves are so determined to subvert everything their first ever animated feature film stands for. Rachel Zegler has of course spoken out of turn many times before, and thus found herself on what just might turn out to be the wrong side of history on a number of issues. Case in point, Data Racer has documented her harassing Gina Carano, passing judgment on anyone of even a slightly conservative bent, encouraging, shall we say, negative physical interactions with J.K. Rowling, and smearing and actively attempting to cancel Jeremy Renner, which is incidentally what precipitated that video about her whining about being taken out of context. But her spotty history aside, what has gone viral in the last few days, what has put Snow White on blast, is a juxtaposition of two different interviews where two very different attitudes towards Snow White were expressed. One of the original, I'm a really big Disney fan. I grew up at the Disney parks. My parents took me every summer. Oh, you did? Yeah, okay. so it, it's like, it is. It's a part of my upbringing. It's my favorite thing, so... It, it's just one of those things yeah, that comes don't, with the territory. Well, then, if you love it, don't let them scare you. I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once, and then I never picked it up again. Like, <laughs> I'm being so serious. I watched it once, and then I went on the ride in Disney World, which was called Snow White Scary Adventures. Doesn't sound like something a little kid would like. Was <laughs> terrified of it. Never revisited Snow White again. So, in the late-night talk show with Jimmy Kimmel, she claimed to be a fan, while in another interview, she made it clear that she's anything but. So why would she lie like that? Well, that's actually very, very easy to explain. The interview, in which she made it clear that she was not a fan, was an actual interview, in which Rachel Zegler revealed her true feelings on Snow White, which she, again, is not a fan of. If she had been, then, as we'll see, Disney would probably never have hired her in the first place. By contrast, her appearance on Jimmy Kimmel wasn't so much an interview as it was a performance. When actors sign on for an acting role, the acting isn't restricted to the actual shoot of the movie. No, they also have to act for the press during the promotional tour, and the purest form of acting for the press is appearances on late-night talk shows. Whenever actors with upcoming movies appear on such talk shows, this is part of their job as actors, and they are, in character, portraying fictionalized versions of themselves. What may appear to be an interview to the audience isn't so much an interview as it is a carefully planned interaction between two actors. It is the job of the actor playing the host to ask leading questions, and it is the job of the actor promoting an upcoming movie to regurgitate the talking points that have been spoon-fed to them by their handlers, who are just off-screen. Don't believe me? Well, even the industry trades tacitly admit this is how it is. Back when The Flash spectacularly bombed in its opening weekend, Deadline Hollywood in part blamed the writer's strike, which kept late-night talk shows off the air. And late-night talk shows were just about the only place where the remaining cast could be trusted not to be ambushed by questions about Ezra Miller. To it, Deadline Hollywood wrote, Late night TV provides a fun, not to mention a controlled environment, where talent can sidestep any sticky conversations. 
The reason why many didn't sit down with the bulk of press is so they didn't have to be on the hook for fielding uncomfortable questions about the leading star of the film, Ezra Miller. The takeaway here is that for Hollywood, late night talk shows represent a controlled environment. Getting back to Snow White then, it's not so much that Rachel Zegler lied to the world in her Jimmy Kimmel appearance, but that she was doing her job as an actor, telling her momentary co-star Jimmy Kimmel exactly what her off-camera Disney handler told her to say. That is not to say that she hasn't said some stuff in the past that there can be no excuse for, only that where Snow White is concerned, Rachel Zegler is, if anything, the least of problems. Getting to those problems, here is another example of Rachel Zegler parroting all the talking points Disney marketing wants her to get out there. I just mean that it's no longer 1937, and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is... not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be, and the leader that her late father told her that she could be if she was fearless, fair, brave, and true. And so it's just a really incredible story for, I think, young people everywhere to see themselves in. So, Snow White and the Seven Diverse and Inclusive Beings, because Peter Dinklage personally saw to it that they wouldn't be seven dwarves, will be all about Snow White's quest for power, becoming the biggest girl boss of the land. This, of course, is a subversion of not just the original Germanic folktale, but of Disney's animated classic, the first theatrical feature Disney ever put out, and which arguably saved the company. It would appear that Rachel Zegler does not hold it in very high regard, but the bigger issue here is that neither does Disney. Whichever questionable statements Zegler may have made on her own accord in the past, and lord knows there are many to choose from, her statements on Snow White aren't among them. Contrary to what many think, even some who speak out in the media, this is not a case of her speaking out of turn. This is not her going rogue or going off script. This is her saying exactly what Disney wants her to say in accordance with her contract. The words may be coming out of Rachel Zegler's mouth, but everything about this no longer being 1937 and her not needing to be rescued by a creepy prince and all that jazz are PR lines coming straight from Disney marketing, because that is what the movie is and that is how they intend to sell it. But why would they do that? As covered in our previous Disney video, Bob Iger has shifted Disney's focus away from the properties created by Walt Disney himself and towards content that Iger acquired from outside. And on top of that, he filled the company with activists at all levels. Here's a famous example of one such activist. Our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like my like not at all secret gay agenda. Like I was just wherever I could, just basically adding queerness. Here's the thing, the activists working in Disney today have nothing but disdain for Walt Disney as a creator and historical figure, and they are, if anything, ashamed of the Disney legacy. I submit that they deem the traditional Disney as something problematic, that modern-day Disney, the Bob Iger company, has to distance itself from and, in a sense, erase. And that is what this particular live-action remake is all about. That is why Rachel Zegler was hired for the role. She fits the image for the current year reimagining. She has no love for the original. And chances are, the activist producers who hired her fully agree with all of her earlier statements that might not have gone over too well with normal people, and being of a warped worldview, they probably thought she was endearing in the very same interviews that repelled everyone else. So, what does this all mean for the movie? Well, chances are it's going to be released exactly as planned. And following that, it's probably not going to go down very well with audiences around the world, and so it's going to end up subtracting another hundred million or so from Disney's bottom line in pure loss. Some have speculated that realizing this, Bob Iger could end up cancelling the movie for a tax deduction, 
but for now, that is pure wishful thinking. Even if Bob Iger ends up using the mass firings to rid the company of activists, and even that remains to be seen, the money spent on making this movie have already been spent. It can't be fixed unless they admit defeat and reshoot the entire thing, which they'd never do. So options are, scrap it or release it. What do you think they will and should do? And are you at all interested in seeing the movie? Let me know in the comments.